All right, all right, all right. <laughs> we are here to talk about the top 10 fruity florals in my collection. Not in the whole world. I can't speak for the whole world. I can only speak for what's here and what I have tried. I have 10 beauties for you, and I have one honorable mention. Before we get into those, I would love to hear two things from you. One is, what is your favorite, favorite all-time fruity floral? Drop that in the comments so that we can hear from each other. And the other is, would you like to see a favorite florals or must-try florals kind of a video here? I've done a gentle florals and I've done a powerhouse florals. That was last spring. A year has passed. A lot has rotated in and out of the collection. Would you be interested in seeing a floral-focused video and I asked that question because many of my peers here on YouTube have posted their fantastic floral videos, and I'm not sure if you're interested in seeing yet another one. So let me know that out of the way. Let's talk about what I think, in my opinion, is one of the sexiest categories of fragrances. Some people think that fruity florals are a little on the juvenile side or maybe for the younger ladies, but I'm gonna tell you what. Men love a good fruity floral fragrance on a woman. I don't know what it is about that scent profile. It drives them bananas, number one. Number two, the designers have it. Let me repeat that for all of my niche snob friends out there. <laughs> Coming close and huddle, the designers have it. Why are designers mass appealing? Perfumers that make designer fragrances know what the masses want including what will attract men to women. So think what you like about that. It's just the truth. Let's jump into these gorgeous fragrances that are really fun to pull out here into the late spring and early summer as well. Let's get to it. We're gonna come straight out of the gate with what I think is one of the best in the fruity floral category, Misty Or Absolutely Blooming. This, this <laughs> is amazing. Raspberry rose, musk, there's a little bit of pink pepper, there's a sweet berry note, other berry notes in here. I think this is awesome. I will say that you might go nose blind to this, but don't be fooled. This is a fragrance that has very decent longevity and sillage for some people if they're well moisturized and all the rest. This, this can take them through the whole day. You'll be smelling it well into the early evening hours maybe not into the nighttime, <laughs> but definitely a full work day. One of the most feminine fragrances in my collection. Love it. And I think the bottle is super cute as well. Definitely pronounced raspberry and rose are the two main players in this fragrance. Maybe I am cheating by adding this one in, but it drives gentlemen crazy. I've heard this on other channels and I've had the same experience in my house with my husband. It's Jimmy Choo. I want to. This has a pronounced vanilla in it too. So that's maybe the little bit of a cheating part, but it's this alluring combination of peach and orange and white florals, particularly a jasmine note, a little bit of lily. It's also decently long lasting and will give you some pretty good sillage. This is one when you walk in the room, people will notice you and want to get a little closer to sniff that beautiful fragrance. One that is very similar to absolutely blooming is Mon Perry Intensement. I would say that this one is even sweeter. I would say that this one is maybe fruitier and this one is a little bit more on the sugary side, if you will. They have similarities in that this is rose and raspberry. It also has black currant like the Misty Or Absolutely Blooming does. Pear, a little bit of musk. This is a very sweet feminine fragrance that I think has a lot of mass appeal some people say this doesn't last long. I would say I get moderate longevity. It isn't the longest lasting fragrance in the world, but it definitely performs decently. And I think the bottle is just super duper stinking cute. This is really, really good. Great for date night. Whereas this one, I'd wear this on date night too, but I think of this as more of a daytime appropriate fragrance, for example, whereas this, you can wear this to work too, but you might transition with this one into dinner and evening dinner and date night. The next one I can definitely say is not the most projecting or long lasting. It's one of those after shower, fresh smells, running errands. You just want to smell pretty and girly, but maybe not command a room with it. You just want to throw it on and know that it smells good. 
Daisy from Marc Jacobs. This is the oh so fresh version. And I've had this for a few years. It was gifted to me by my husband. It has special meaning because of that. I do pick up something that's not listed here and it's a hint of a strawberry, a very slight hint of strawberry in this fragrance. Some of the notes listed on the Marc Jacobs site, however, are raspberry, grapefruit, pear. I can't say that I get a lot of grapefruit or citrusy notes. To me, this is more of a, a slight subtle berry fragrance. And in terms of the florals, I would say you're going to get some of the violet that's listed and a really soft, subtle rose. So it's a nice combination of a number of different really soft fruits and pleasant ro pleasant florals, excuse me, that make this all overall a very light, fruity floral fragrance that's very, very easy going, very easy to douse yourself in head to toe and head out of the, out of the door without offending anyone. Another rose and berry combination that I am probably surprised I'm putting in this video because I would typically think of putting it in a rose video and it may show up in a rose video too, but really it is a fruity floral fragrance proper. And that's Nina Rishi Rose Lextas. This is one that in my blind buy videos where I am now pushing one out to bring one in that I consider decluttering in favor of a fragrance that it kind of sort of reminded me of. But it was one of those things I went to film and I put this up and I smelled it again. I've worn this recently and remembered how much I enjoyed it and didn't you know, I fell in love with it all over again. So I can't let this leave the collection right now. And this bottle in this blush nude pink, blush nude, blush pink color is just so delightful. By the way, have you tried the new Carolina Herrera Good Girl Blush? The bottle is gorgeous and the fragrance smells really good, like a, a musky citrus fragrance with a little bit of floral. Check that one out. But this one <laughs> is also a rose and berry fragrance, a lot like some of the others that I've mentioned here, vanilla and musk. And I will say the rose in here is fairly pronounced, but you can't deny that there's a sweet fruitiness to this as well. Maybe not quite as youthful, for example, as this and not quite in the sweet direction as this. This is a different kind of sweet. It's like a delicate sweet. This wears well on the skin. I don't think it was the most long lasting. The last time I wore it, I feel like I, it took me until the early afternoon before I had to think about whether I wanted to spray again. And again, just what a, a pretty bottle to have in your collection, but an alluring fragrance. Hus well, husband likes all of these. I was gonna say husband likes this. He likes all of these. So and my sense from other people's reviews is that their partners like this also. One fragrance that belongs in this category, but is pretty deceiving because you can't find any fruit listed in the note structure. It's not on Fragrantica. It's not on the spoiler alert, Mark Jacobs website either. However, for me, there's no denying that this is a fruity floral fragrance. It's Marc Jacobs Perfect Intense. Boy, I sure wish I had gotten the full size bottle so I could get the super gaudy top on it that's also kind of cute. So this fragrance, the notes that are listed are almond and jasmine and sandalwood and narcissus, which can be a bit of a dirty floral note. But I feel like there are, I feel like there are fruits in here. So there must be, <laughs> there's definitely a fruity accord that keeps this bright and happy and open and cheerful while at the same time having that more mature feminine touch from the florals like Jasmine and the Narcissus. So yeah, this is a really neat fragrance and fairly long lasting, a happy one to wear. I believe I've talked about this next one in my hidden gem videos, but I'm not sure if I haven't, it definitely deserves a mention here. This is gorgeous and it is fairly long lasting with projection. It's called Harmony Emotion. It's not the sexiest bottle and it's made by Marco Cerusi. Marco Cerusi looks like this. I don't remember what I paid for this, but I feel like it was in the $20 or under range, maybe even like between, between 10 and $20 for this whole big bottle. Like I said, a good performer, a very, very sexy, alluring, fruity floral perfume, a little bit more on the mature side than for example, something like your also fresh version here. You get deep berries in here, you get fruit like peaches, other florals, a lot of sweetness, and I would even say a little bit of muskiness. I have it sprayed here. Sometimes I forget that I have this, but the times that I wear it, I never regret it. It's a really pretty fragrance and in the times that I've thought about decluttering, sometimes I'll think about this one because a lot of people don't know about it. And so when I mention it on the channel, no one seems excited about it, but I'm gonna tell you what, <laughs> this is definitely a hidden gem. I would 
tell you to go check this out. Then a fragrance that I adore and I'm really sad is discontinued. I do have a full size backup of this and I'm making my way through a smaller one. In fact, I think I have a full size backup in like a 1.7 ounce. That's how much I love this. And let me tell you, I have sold off a lot of my backups because I just, I don't need them. This is Valentino Donna Aqua. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> almond and pear in the opening very luscious delicious a heavenly fragrance if you ask me then there's frangipani there are white florals sandalwood it is a yummy heavenly fragrance and i will say here's the issue with this the opening is the most magnificent part the dry down is very nice too but the opening is just so fabulous and you get that for a good 30 minutes to an hour ish or so before it starts to calm down into that yellow floral with some hints of woodiness in it. So this also is not the longest lasting fragrance. I would say it's moderate in terms of longevity and projection. However, worth hunting down if you can conceptualize what the combination of almond and pear smells like, along with those yellow and white florals surrounding it. Really, really beautiful and a darn shame that it was discontinued. Then a different kind of a fruity floral because it has some coldness to it from a beautiful iris note. It's We La Via Belle. Great berries, iris, rose, pink pepper, the classic patchouli that you get in the other La Via Belle. I mean, this is the La Via Belle bottle with this beautiful splash of color on it, but this is just exquisite. The story is I was in New York. I smelled this on a woman in an elevator and I got really shy to ask her. I don't know why she was with, I guess, her boyfriend in, in a deep conversation. I didn't want to interrupt them. And the floors, the numbers on the elevators just kept going down. I'm like, I'm going to miss my opportunity to ask her what she's wearing. So finally, I'm a very introverted person. I know it doesn't seem like that from all these videos that I do, but I'm very introverted. I don't like bothering people in public, but man, what are you wearing? It is so, so good. This is what she had on. She couldn't tell me. She just said the new Lancome. <laughs> and it was this one at the time. Really glad that I hunted it down. This is one of my favorite buys of 2022 and going strong in 2023. Gorgeous and very sexy. So I was happily recording there for about a good 10 minutes and then looked up and realized that it was actually pause. <laughs> so Oh, filming can be fun sometimes. <laughs> so next I want to talk about my honorable mention and then my top two. And I said top two because I kind of consider them very, very similar. So it's hard to tease one out from the other. So my honorable mention is C. Passione from Armani. And the reason it's honorable is because, well, honorable mention, it really gives me more shampoo vibes, like very luxurious shampoo vibes, uh, rather than a true fruity floral. However, it definitely has fruits and it definitely has floral, florals and it's worth mentioning in this category. What I like about this fragrance is it has a variety of fruit in it, including pear, which tends to be sweet, more like on the gourmand side, if you will. And it has pineapple and some other citruses on the fruit side of things. And then on the floral side, it's rose and jasmine, and I think it's heliotrope. Also has pink pepper. I'm noticing that pink pepper is very frequently paired up with rose fragrances, like Sweet Diamond, Pink Pepper from Kaali, which is a nice fragrance. I have many of it. I haven't purchased a full bottle of that yet because I have others that smell like it, but that's another conversation for another video. We're not here to talk about that. I really think this is a great grab and go easy fragrance for, you know, your t-shirt and jeans kinds of days where you just want to hang out or run errands or even going to the gym. Real simple, clean, nice, fruity, floral, but on the clean and shampooy side of things. So I'm realizing I lied just a tiny bit at the top of the video by saying that this was going to be all designer. I didn't actually say that. I said the designers have it. There is a niche fragrance among the bunch, but I want to introduce these two together because they have significant similarities. And if you're on a budget or want to keep your collection curated or just don't want to have fragrances that smell much alike, this is Burberry Her EDT. The EDT with like the minty green seafoam top type of thing. And then BDK Passessoir. Both are absolutely gorgeous to die for, in my opinion. Beautiful spring fruity floral fragrances. The main difference between these, they vibe very similar. This could be like the <laughs> maybe lighter, sprightlier, more fun sister, whereas this one is just a tad more serious, but this one can be a little devilish also. <laughs> these are both fun fragrances for spring, very juicy fragrances. These both have lots of deeply sweet fruit in them, as well as some gorgeous florals. 
This one has musk, if you will, as its undercarriage. This one has a woodiness as its undercarriage. That's the main difference. In the end, this one comes across maybe a little deeper and sweeter in the same sense that if you've tried C Intense, the 2021 version, the black currant that's in that fragrance, the syrupiness of it, you get a little bit of that in here. This one is a little bit thinner in texture in terms of the sweetness of the fruit, but they vibe very similar. They're definitely in the same family, you know, sisters in the same family, if you will. And these are probably maybe my favorite among the bunch. I like all of these and it's really super hard to choose, but if I had to give them all away and only choose one, I'd fight to choose these two together. So these get the number one billing, you know, 1 1.1 and 1.1.2 or something <laughs> like that, or maybe, anyway, you get the idea. These are the top ones. So friends, that brings me to the end of the video. Don't forget to drop in the comments your favorite fruity floral so that our friends can learn from you. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care.